You know, it's not every day when you get to take a look at a Linux distro created by a Microsoft developer, but that's exactly what Anduin OS is. And probably not surprisingly, this is meant to look and feel like Windows 11 in an attempt to make the transition to Linux a bit easier for those wanting to make the switch. So I guess this guy's not telling his boss about that part. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So when I first started getting suggestions to take a look at this, my initial thought was, oh boy, here's another reskinned hack job sloppily thrown together by some guy who doesn't really know what he's doing. So basically, Wubuntu 2.0. But when I started looking into this and tried it out for myself, I found out a few things that really changed my perspective on it. To get the big question out of the way, yes, this is actually made by a Microsoft employee. Or a former employee, I should say. And I know what you're thinking, but according to his website, it sounds like he left sometime this year because of all those layoffs that Microsoft did. But talking about the OS itself, I think this distro does a great job at mimicking the Windows user interface without directly copying it. This is still its own thing, and you're going to see that in a minute once we get it installed. Now you can download this from the website, which I'll have linked down below, and right off the bat, they are very clear about who this distro is meant for. Developers transitioning from Windows to Linux. It is Ubuntu-based, and the ISO is just under 2 gigabytes in size, and there are currently two versions available. 1.1, which is the LTS release, and 1.3, the standard release. So they're kind of following the same release branch structure that Ubuntu has, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at version 1.3.4, which is currently, as of filming anyways, the latest release, which this is an update to version 1.3, which is based on Ubuntu 2504, currently the latest non-LTS version of Ubuntu. And because of that, the system requirements pretty much mirror what Ubuntu's are, so you need to have a 2 gigahertz processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and 20 gigabytes of hard drive space, though with Ubuntu you do need 25, and the download for Ubuntu 2504 is 6 gigabytes in size, so almost three times the size of Anduin OS. So we've got this set up in a virtual machine here, we're going to boot off of the live CD. And one of the first things I notice is that the initial boot screen here is a very basic, just, you know, Ubuntu 2504 text-based screen. Though this does get changed to a more pretty looking screen once we install it on the hard drive and reboot. And speaking of, why don't we do that right now? And, uh, you know, go through your standard stuff that you've probably seen a million times if you've installed Ubuntu or, uh, you know, another Ubuntu-based distro. But this right here is where things change. Once we, of course, add our name and uh, put in our computer name and all that stuff, and we'll put in a super secure password and uh, go here. So this is where they've actually changed the branding around. So it has a screenshot of the start menu here. And something notable, they have actually removed Snap to reduce disk usage. However, you can always reinstall it, flat pack and app image whenever you need them. But yeah, so they've got like their own screenshots here uh, going through and you know telling you a little bit about the operating system. And yeah, we'll just let it finish copying files here. It is almost done. So let's restart. Oh yeah, and check out that cursor there. Yeah, they modified that as well. So here is the boot screen, which we, well, we got to remove the installation media, which is already removed for us. Thanks, VMware. The boot screen, uh, you know, is just a modified version of the current Ubuntu one, but they got their own logo here and, you know, it looks kind of nice. So yeah. Now, right off the bat, this operating system does a pretty good job at recreating the Windows 11 user interface. So you've got a lot of the same UI elements that you would have been used to in Windows 11. You got your taskbar down here, your centered buttons by default. You have a recreation of the Windows 11 start menu with your pinned applications up here. As you open stuff up, you will get recents to show up down here. You have a search box. You've got your all apps view. You have your system tray down over here, and you have this little weather widget over here on the left. However, at least in my opinion, this still feels like its own operating system, and that really differentiates it from something like Ubuntu, which, you know, ignoring all of the other controversies with that distro for a second, it just looked exactly like Windows 11 with the same wallpaper and the same icons and, you know, trying to make everything look as one-to-one -one as possible, which I don't think is a good approach for making a distro that is meant to transition people away from Windows 11, because there's going to be a lot of things in Linux that don't function 
function the same as they do in Windows that you have to slowly get used to. So with Anduin OS, you have a different wallpaper, different icons. This does utilize the GNOME desktop environment. So a lot of this stuff would have come with standard Ubuntu, but there are some additional applications, both GNOME and non-GNOME, that uh, do not come with it that have been added in here. However, I do want to point out that this wallpaper and these icons are not original. They did come from an existing theme called Windows 11 Fluent Dark for KDE Plasma 6. Now, this is clearly stated in their list of third-party software included in Anduin OS, so they've got all that stuff right here, and then here's the icon theme and the Fluent GTK theme. And this is, of course, the bare minimum. It's what you're supposed to do. But, I mean, I think that as long as you are upfront about what the system utilizes and what is in here that you did not create, then, you know, people can't really be mad at you, right? Now, in terms of the applications that do not come with at least a standard install of Ubuntu, one of those is the weather application. Now, this is just GNOME weather, and this is different from the uh, little widget down here, but we can select a location. So we'll put in New York here. And uh, yeah, so, you know, pretty, pretty standard stuff. You also have a sound recorder course just the standard gnome sound recorder uh, there's also a network tools uh, program and this is just a handful of stuff that i selected there are some other things in here uh, but this is a uh, a gnome it's actually it doesn't say that it's gnome in here but if you go to the website it does link to uh well now a 404 page on uh, gnome.org so i guess maybe this is not uh, actively maintained anymore or there's some newer version of it and there is one non-gnome application that is calculate uh, so this has been added in here, and I believe it does replace the uh, existing calculator. Now, of course, when you search in here, you do get a list of uh, you know additional software that you can download through the uh, GNOME App Store. And speaking of app stores, today's video sponsor Surfshark is available in just about every app store because their VPN works with desktops, laptops, phones, smart TVs, even the Apple Vision Pro if you have one of those for some reason. Surfshark has been my VPN of choice for close to five years now. And what I love about it most is its support of unlimited simultaneous connections. So you can have all your devices using your plan at the same time. Heck, they even encourage it. And that's not something you'll find with a lot of those other providers. They also throw in some nice extras like their alternative ID email masking feature, and each of their over 3,000 servers don't keep any logs, so your browsing history is kept private. All of their plans come backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, and if you sign up at surfshark.com slash michaelmjd, you'll get four extra months for free with the purchase of a year or two-year plan. So be sure to check them out, and huge thanks again to Surfshark for making this video possible. It looks like we got a couple updates. I'll go ahead and restart and make sure the system is completely up to date. But something that really surprised me is according to the change log, the GNOME software store was not added until version 1.3. So prior to that, you were going to have to install packages yourself and update everything through terminal. And for a person transitioning from Windows to Linux, that is not a good thing to throw in their face immediately. So uh, it's great that they did eventually add this, but I'm kind of surprised it wasn't in here from the very beginning. A couple other things I noticed, the help application that is in here has not been modified whatsoever. So this still is the Ubuntu desktop guide. None of the branding has been changed. And some of the stuff in here, you know, doesn't pertain to this system at all. Like the visual overview of GNOME here, this is all completely different because of the way that the, you know, interface has been modified. And I guess we can take a look at like the system tray down here. You've got your clock, which opens up your calendar. You actually have another weather widget right here, though I think that just, yeah, that's actually from the GNOME weather uh, application itself. You've got your list of notifications right over here. You can add world clocks. And then this is just a single button that opens up your little control center. And we can actually turn off the dark style. And so, yeah, here's what it looks like in light mode. So uh, overall, here's what I will say about Anduin OS. Just to be upfront about this, and I always say this in these lesser known or new distro videos, I have no intention of using this on a computer of mine because when it comes to Linux, I always prefer the mainstream distributions, you know, Ubuntu and Linux Mint, for example. And I think that Linux Mint is a great choice if you are a Windows user considering making the switch to Linux because a lot of the UI elements are similar. I think it would provide you with a smoother learning curve. And another thing you have to consider is that because Anduin OS here is a brand new distro with one person working on it or well github list nine contributors so there's a you know there's a few people working on this thing 
but that is not even close to the amount of people working on Ubuntu and Linux Mint. So I don't know how often updates are going to get pushed out for Anduin OS. It seems like they have been pretty consistent as there have been four major releases so far this year. But the benefit of going with Ubuntu, for instance, is that you get updates on a consistent basis. However, I will say that I think that Anduin OS is one of the better Linux to look like Windows projects that we've seen in a while. Certainly miles better than Ubuntu or Winix or Linux FX or whatever the heck they want to call it tomorrow. There's no weird payment and licensing nonsense going on. This is completely free to download. And I think at the very least, installing this on a secondary machine or using it as a transitional system for somebody wanting to learn Linux before switching off of Windows and you know making the switch those are pretty good uses for this but i'd love to hear what you guys think that is pretty much going to wrap it up for today's episode i hope you enjoyed this one be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did get subscribed maybe consider becoming a patron or a channel member to get early access to these videos before anybody else but either way i just want to thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video